I am selling my UK buy-to-let investment property in 2024. In this video, I will share with you exactly which buy-to-let properties I'm selling and why. I'll also share with you my property portfolio analysis tool so you can carry out this exercise on your own properties to decide which properties you need to dump in 2024. And of course, if you're new to buy to let or looking to grow and expand your buy to let portfolio in 2024, you can use this analysis tool to laser target your efforts on the properties that you need to focus on for 2024 and beyond. That's all coming up, but if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon. We put out plenty of videos each and every week, all dedicated to keeping you on top of your property investing game. Hi, my name is Ranjan Bhattacharya. I've been investing and developing properties for the last 30 years. You may have seen me on the hit Sky TV show, Property Elevator, or attended one of our Baker Street property meets in central London. Now, one of the things I hear buy-to-let landlords say quite a lot is that I'm a buyer. I buy to hold and I never sell. I hear a lot of buy-to-let investors say, you know what, I'm actually turned on by finding properties, analysing the deal, structuring the deal in a creative way, um, using uh, the minimum capital I need to to get the deal going, uh, doing all the creativity and applying for planning permission or developing the properties and all the rest of it. But once they're let, I like to let and forget, just hand it over to management team and let them get on with it. Part of that I agree with, day-to-day -day letting and management can be let to a letting team but you should always be looking at your portfolio from an asset management perspective. Now, the one thing we do each and every year is to take a look at all the buy -to -let properties in our portfolio and basically decide whether or not each one of those properties justifies a place in that portfolio going forward over the next few years. If they don't deliver on our strategy and our goals and objectives going forward, then it doesn't need to be held by us at all. Now, over 20 years ago, I designed a specific tool for analyzing every property in your buy-to-let portfolio, and I'm gonna share that with you. Now, I first published it in a book I wrote back in 2006 called Build Your Property Empire, Now's the Time. Now, if you, if you had that book, by the way, and you're watching this video, do let me know in the comments below and what you thought of it. But that book sold over 45,000 copies. It's out of print now, uh, so you don't have to fish around for it. I'm going to share with you specifically what that tool's about and how to use it. So let me introduce you to my portfolio analyzer matrix. So what you've got to do is basically draw this matrix out on a piece of paper and plot every property in your portfolio uh, on this matrix in one of these four boxes. So on the vertical axis, you've got capital appreciation. Is the capital appreciation potential of this property low or high? And on the horizontal axis, you have cash flow generation. How much cash are you making from the cash that you have invested in that particular property? Is it low or is it high? What you end up with then is your property portfolio categorized into four categories. You have your stars and your wild cards, you have your cash cows and you have your dogs. And what you want to be doing is basically shooting your dogs. No offense to pet lovers. So let's break this down a little bit. By the way, if you're liking this video, make sure you smash that like button. Also tell me what you think uh, about this strategy and this tool in the comments below. Now let's start by looking at the stars. Now your stars are basically properties where um, you have high capital growth potential and they're also generating high cash flow. Now these are obviously properties that you want to keep. These are properties that you want to acquire more of and getting your properties to star grade should be the primary focus of your drive in 2024 and beyond. Then you have your cash cows. They may not have as much um, star quality uh, capital appreciation potential, but they sure as hell deliver a decent amount of cash flow. These will typically be properties like ex-local authority flats. Uh, not so much capital appreciation, but good solid rental income. Things like HMOs, houses in multiple occupation as well, and perhaps flats above commercial premises. 
These are all properties where you wouldn't expect so much capital appreciation, but that, that doesn't deter from their rental income generating potential, which means that they are cash cows for you. Are you struggling to find your next commercial to residential conversion project? Well, over the next two years, virtually every UK bank branch will close. Banks are fabulous buildings in prime locations, and thanks to permitted development rights, they're really easy to convert to alternative uses under a light touch planning regime. My team have put together a list of over 500 UK bank branches which are poised for imminent closure. And for a limited period only, you can download this list absolutely free. Your next commercial property project is on this list, so download it now and enjoy the rest of the video. Now let's look at your wild cards. Your wild cards are areas where there's potentially high capital growth potential, but the cash flow is relatively low. Now when the market is booming, there's a good case for going for wild card properties because you'll be trying to spot hotspot areas, areas that are trending, areas which are benefiting from a lot of regeneration activity or government regeneration um, funding, areas where there's a new transport link for example. These are all areas which are likely to experience medium term capital appreciation but you may not get so much rental yield. But your play and your reason for having that property in your portfolio is more for the capital appreciation than it is for the rental income. Now that is great when the market is going gangbusters and everything is boom, 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 boom. But in a market like we've got now, 2024 and beyond, we're not going to experience too much capital appreciation for the next three or four years. And the wild cards shouldn't be the main target of your portfolio expansion going forward. Now then you get to your dogs. Your dogs are of course properties where there's low capital appreciation potential and the cash generating ability or the cash on cash return that you're making from that property is relatively low. And quite frankly, these dogs in your portfolio you should be getting rid of because it's far better to deploy that capital in acquiring new stars. Now you might say to me, well, um, I'm not a dumb investor. I'm not buying any dogs in the first place. I'm just going to buy stars and, and cash cows and stuff like that. So why should I bother with this sort of analysis? Well, a property can be a star, but become a dog over time. And that's why this whole mantra of, you know what, I'm always buying and I'm never going to sell is quite frankly stupid. You need to look at your portfolio each and every year and analyze where on this matrix each property sits and then decide what you want to do with it going forward. Now let me explain how a property can become a dog over time. So you had a star, you know, it was high cash flow generating and it was also high capital appreciation, but you bought it 10 years ago. So a lot of that capital appreciation has already happened. Firstly, you have to then look at, well, okay, I've had 10 years of capital appreciation. What is the capital appreciation, appreciation I can expect going forward over the next 5, 10 years? The other thing you have to look at is, well, how much capital do I have tied up in it? Now, when I bought the property 10 years ago, you may have um, done the deal creatively so that you tied up minimum of your own cash, or you may have put in a small deposit and left that tied up in the property. But as the property has increased in value over the years of ownership, the amount of cash or equity you have tied up in that property deal increases over time. So therefore your rental return as a percentage of the cash you have tied up in that property deal can decrease over time. And at that point you have you have to take a call. If you've built up a lot of equity in that property, but there's not much future capital growth potential, and you're not making the same cash return on the equity you have tied up in that property compared to some of your stars, then isn't it better to dispose of that dog and perhaps free up that equity to invest in two or three more stars? 
So that's why the mantra of, well, I'm never selling, is not a very, very good mantra to abide by. What you've got to do as a property investor is also do a little bit of asset management and look at all the properties in your portfolio to see whether each one justifies a place in it going forward for your strategy as it is today. Now tell me what you think of what I've said. Comment below. Also smash that like button. It helps us out on YouTube and it means that more buy to let property investors get to see videos like this. So in 2024 and beyond, the properties that you should be buying are really the stars and the cash cows. They're the ones that are going to set you up for the next three or four years. It's not the right time to be doing wild cards. And sorry, pet lovers, there's no case for investing in dogs. That's it for this video. See you guys in the next one. Uh, smash that like button. Also subscribe if you haven't already done so. Bye for now. The Baker Street Property Meet is the UK's largest and number one property investors networking event. The property market is going through monumental change right now and at Baker Street Property Meet we aim to keep you up to date with the latest tips and tricks and insider tactics to help you keep on top of your property investing game and succeed in these troubled economic times. The Baker Street Property Meet is fundamentally about networking because it's not what you know, it's who you know. And at Baker Street, we aim to connect you with the people to make your property journey a monumental success. There's no better place to be to further your property investment journey than the Baker Street Property Meet. So make sure you're here, you're connecting with myself and Andrew Roberts, our expert guest speakers and 300 passionate property people each and every month. See you at the next meet. Get your spot at bakerstreetpropertymeet.com.